I've often said that we live in something of an artisan and renaissance boom period in the action figure space. Watching the fan eventually become the creator, there's few things more heartwarming than something like this. And once again, hi again, everyone. My name's Ken, and this is a Toy Connections online live stream, or TKO, broadcasting to you on this weekend, whatever part of the globe you happen to be from. So today we've brought in Gridiron Studios to come and have a chat with us about the type of work that they do. You can see that I've come out to represent a little bit here. And I brought a couple of friends online as well to help us host this particular uh, live stream. So for those who aren't familiar, although you likely would be if you follow the channel because I put up a couple of videos of theirs already, Gridiron Studios is great for upgrading your toy product, your G.I. Joe classified, your six inch military stuff. That's kind of where my focus has been as far as collecting their product but they admittedly have a, a bunch of uh, weaponry for 118th style figures as well if you're more into the four inch stuff and they do have some stuff for the six inch um, high fantasy and uh, medieval type of uh, medieval type of figures as well if you're into mythic legions and other types of products so I'm gonna pop on a couple of friends and then we're gonna say hello to uh, Mark from gridiron when he jumps in and then we're gonna say hi to the chat so um, You've, you've probably seen my latest video and the individual who customized this uh, this desert loadout here, but he's been a great ringer and supporter of Gridiron Studios. If you follow him on Facebook or Instagram, he's always pumping their product. They have a sale going on right now. So, oh, and before I do that, let's uh, throw the ticker on so that you all know where to find Gridiron Studios. And uh, with that, let's uh, bring Dreadnought Ryan in. How are you, my friend? I'm wonderful. How are you, Ken? Doing great, doing great. I know we had to uh, adjust a couple of things backstage a little bit, so we're a few minutes late. And uh, But hey, we're all here, and we're all here to have a great time and uh, hopefully inform the crowd as to uh, some of the options we got out there. And, Let's just um, be honest. We were, we were trying to hit Mark up for the secrets of their uh, experimental division of weapons development. Let's just, you know. We tried, folks. We tried. The whole, the whole Mars industry thing. Like he's right now, he's our Destro, and we're the buyers. Is kind of what's uh, what's going yes. on. So, um, and then also we've got uh, another friend backstage here uh, celebrating two years on his particular channel, and he will have Mark and Gridiron Studios uh, next week on his channel as well. But uh, Travis Moody, how are you? Toy yo, yo, yo. Good morning, fellas. How are you? We're doing what's up, uh, money. We're doing we're doing great. How are you? Um, awesome because I thought I was gonna be 15 minutes late and I'm on time somehow. Thanks, guys. We were 10 minutes late jumping on ourselves, but you know, this happens on a lot of live streams where you you get on and we're like, where is he? Where's the where's the streamer? We're like, it happens. It's all good. Yep. More than happy. And we're gonna bring on the man of the hour, the individual behind Gridiron Studios, who's been responsible for um making our, our figures look better because that's what it's about. Getting toys on your shelf that look good and um represent the characters that uh, as they always appeared in your mind's eye mark von cannon welcome to toy connections online hey You're guys on, it's good to oh, be here how are you? good to be here yeah well good welcome you. and uh yeah cool thanks for having well, me. um let's see Hey, you're very welcome, uh, and thanks for being on here and let's say hello uh, we've got a few people in the chat already uh jim largo Good to see you, my friend, Anthony Romo. Um, we saw you last night on the island of uh, on the island. Uh, we've got uh, Nolan, um, sixteen bit misfit, and uh, a few others that are uh, that are filing in. Um, and Ryan Sweeney, just want to say thank you again for the generous super chat for uh, for gridiron stuff, <laughs> yep. which he knows I'm eyeing that mountaineer that mountaineer pack. So, yeah. So ordinarily what I do for these sort of live streams is they're normally a panel where I go around the table. Um, now, I kind of just brought in Ryan and, and uh, Travis for support and because they're always being a ringer of your kind of stuff. But what I'm going to do today is I'm going to target the questions towards Mark. And if Ryan and Travis have something they want to add or jump in, just feel free to interrupt us um, on this particular thing. So, um Mark, uh, well, first off, like I said, welcome already as it is. And uh, with regards to uh, Gridiron Studios, I'm not sure if the boys are there in the uh, in the studio or the workshop with you, but can you? Um, they're they're there, working, man. They're working. They're working. Yeah. When I when He's I saw you, boys uh, always working. <laughs> <laughs> putting the boys to work, putting the screws. Always. Yeah, and uh, 
Yeah, well, I didn't actually realize that WWE's Clash at the Castle starts in an hour, so I'm going to miss the beginning of it, but it's worth it for this. As long as I catch the Roman Reigns versus Drew McIntyre main event, I am good. So, yeah. Um, So, Mark, I just wanted to jump right into it and uh, maybe um, give us a a bit of backstory about um, how you started. Obviously, you grew up a G.I. Joe fan. Um, Give us a a bit of backstory about how you started and talk a little bit about the workshop that you've got. Is it like a home workshop? Because people talk about items being 3D printed, but when I have it, I'm like, "Mm, this is better than your run-of-the-mill 3D print stuff, and there's a lot more into it. So maybe just go through a little bit about the mechanics of what you got uh, behind the scenes. Whatever you can disclose. No problem. Well, stuff, man. Thanks to have all you guys on here, man. I love seeing Travis. That that's a that's a really nice shirt you got there. <laughs> I, uh, I wonder where I got that from. I, I think it was like from like um, T Public or no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> totally. Um, so yeah, man, I'm, I'm it's exciting to be here. I so as far as like the background, I mean we you know, this this thing starts a long time ago, right? For us, 1982. So for me, um, spending my whole life, G.I. Joe had always kind of been in my life. I'd been a collector pretty much my whole life. And I got into the toy industry about 25 years ago. Um, we started making diorama materials, and the company I own is build rama So some of you guys are familiar with, um, you know, we had produced like hand-filled sandbags. Um, a lot of, like, about 500 parts that just went to 118 and 132 scale. And uh, I had, you know, a bunch of adventures in between there, and it ended up where my my boys, my two sons, they started getting older and getting through school and you know, kind of getting their experiences. And so we all talked one day. I have a Quaid. You guys, most of you guys know at this point. Quaid does all of our designs. Um, him and I kind of run meetings, and then he's the one that actually does the physical models, uh, the digital model. And... And what he does is, uh, you know, he, he went and got his master's in industrial design um, mm. at ASU, the same place I studied. So it was kind of this perfect time where, uh, you know, we noticed that the weapons with the classified in the beginning, you know, we all weren't really agreeing with what they were doing. And so we thought maybe we had a solution. Totally. And we, we thought we had a solution that could uh, solve that problem. And but. But at the same time, you know, we recognize that there was other guys doing similar things. But we thought maybe with the experience we had and some of the background and some of the technical experience, we brought Colin in to help with production. And so the three of us put our heads together and tried to find a product that was different than the world was seeing in the 3D world. And so we spent a lot a lot of time in R&D and trying to find a, uh, a flex base flex material that would be kind of a proprietary blend for us and we just kept stumbling i mean it was one air after another and once we got it we got it and we knew we had it and that's when we went to market so and and we continued to try to evolve from there um you know try to innovate try to do better but you know this is a this is a still a very uh new technology you know Awesome. Well, that's good to hear some of the backstory behind it and that, you know, you do have those 25 years of experience and sort of building up to this. This wasn't just a one day, oh, look, there's a there's an opening in the market. Let's just start producing stuff, right? Because for a lot of people who were into like the accessories and the figure space, they hadn't heard of Gridiron. I learned about you guys maybe a year ago um myself and then as i started connecting with ryan and travis and um anthony romo in the chat and some of these individuals all of a sudden i was like wow like there's something here to make my figures better and i just as an example right now is i was never a fan of the gi joe classified duke especially the first release when they did the second release they muted the metallic colors and i was still like it's okay like i'm buying it to fill a gap but i didn't care that much when you put the command loadout on him right and all of a sudden, it's like he's got the binoculars, he's got the helmet, although people say the helmet looks more like General Hawks, but whatever, it's a green helmet, it's fine, right? You know, you get the knife, you get the extra the extra weapons, you're like, all of a sudden, I want to display him front and center, middle of the shelf, lights shining on him, like it changed it to that level, and that was kind of my entry into Gridiron, right? And then, you know, a few character loadouts later, and all of a sudden, this is, this is like... 
you start looking forward to it, right? And because even if you're not a painter and a customizer, you can just go load something up like this. Or if you know a painter and customizer like Ryan, you can load the desert gear on on something. You've got a makeshift Dusty or a generic trooper. So um, let me say this, uh, Ken. Go ahead. Gridiron's loadouts and stuff inspire you to be a customizer, or at least at worst, a kit basher. I was like, ah, I can't paint. I can't. I've not done any of this stuff since I was like eight years old. Mm -hmm. You know, and now I've created stuff that I never thought I could because I was inspired. To and I didn't even want to like swap heads and I'll probably do some arm swaps that I was like, I got to do some head swaps. And then uh, Ryan, you know that because you sent me the tail viper kit, you know, I was doing the head swap because the, the Cobra infantry uses a base body. You need an unmasked head, ideally, you know, so then I'm I, there I am swapping heads that I, like I wasn't doing before. And it does inspire you to at least at minimum do that if not go as far as to actually learn how to paint and do some weathering and all that. So um, and on Travis's point there, and Ryan, thank you for showing us some of the items there. Like you've got weapons for the bats and all that. You, um, you mean my addiction? <laughs> yeah, you hold, hold that up. I'm going to bring you up on the solo layout addiction. for a sec. We got time. This, we got time. This is just part of it. Hold on. There's a bigger one. Is there? That's his backlog. Then there's the big pack. Big oh, pack. yeah. So you've, you've got a few projects for yourself. He's on got the go here. five years worth of gridiron stuff there. <laughs> well, yeah. yeah. Um, now, because you touched on the character loadouts and Ryan, you've shown us some of those. Um, Mark, what has been the most popular scale and stuff? Has it been the 1-6? One sorry, 1-6. Uh, one one twelfth character loadouts? Is it something else? Is it the one eighteen? Like for your no. popular stuff, Mark? Oh, no, it's yeah. like one twelve. Like So we ordered... Yeah, we started kind of, uh, you know, early on with Mythic Legions, and, and we love that line. I mean, the Four Horsemen just kill that line. Oh, yes. Mm. Oh, am I might have froze. Is he frozen, or am I frozen? Are we still connected? No. <laughs> we can hear you. Think, we can hear you. I think from my end, it looks like it's Mark's. Okay. It looks like he's moving again. <laughs> okay. Well, we're... Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Um. Okay. So yeah, if you can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah, we got we got you back. Yeah. Worst case, if if it lags, you can always uh, stop the camera, and that, that'll use less bandwidth if it's if it's uh, if it ends up going that way. Okay. Gotcha. Okay. You know, uh, what are we talking about? <laughs> <laughs> your uh, most popular, your your most popular uh, scale and uh, like style. Like, is it the weapons? Or is it the character loadouts? Um, is it the howitzer? <laughs> like, what's what's the most popular uh, scale and style? Mm. Well, we could talk about gridiron so until you it's say. definitely a 112 skill. I mean, we, we kind of got into it pretty early. Mm -hmm. Yep. And we just and tried gridiron to, has... you know, get to where, uh, can you guys hear me now, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah you're yeah. good. Okay. You're good now. So we tried to get the... Uh... Okay. Nope. We're trying to, you know, as far as one and yeah. we we couldn't um we couldn't produce it fast enough in the beginning. Right. We started to just try to keep working on how could we get uh better items. And then and then it was you know, with just guns alone and weapons, you know, we were just trying to, you know, find that Oh, we lost them. It's okay. We'll try to get them back. So just to kind of, you know, they did do a number of Mythic Legions and they came out with some Dio stuff. So they had some grasslands, different things like that. And even the the melee and blade packs that they have, if, if you're looking to do custom Dreadnought stuff, you pick up some of that stuff, the, like the hammer and the axe, it's all worth it. It's really nicely painted stuff, so... And I am I am definitely into Mythic Legions um, myself. Now a lot of Mythic Legions come with 
with enough oh we got them back it looks like we're trying um with enough weapons but a lot of times they only come with one weapon so if you want to put a weapon in the other hand or if it doesn't come with a shield or if you want to put the shield on the back then it should be then yeah it does it does definitely help um with some of this stuff and mark welcome back i think you're good now i think i i hope i'm back <laughs> Yeah, it, it always happens with uh, with connection okay. issues. Um, yeah. If you're underground as I well, I see a big like, like pause sign. And... Hey, you're on a bit of a delay. <laughs> it's because they're in yeah, that Mars bunker. bunker. Yeah, my, my Oh, you're in bunker. the bunker. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Tony. <laughs> Tony. Any better? He, he's on a roll this uh, weekend. Yeah. <laughs> uh, only Romo. Only yeah, Romo. Only Romo. Yeah. If you're really like in a base, if you're really like in a basement or something, like you may want to take like a cell phone and then like maybe go upstairs where where it's easier to get a clear signal. Like that could be one thing. Um, or he could yeah. reset his router and we could just bullshit for a couple minutes while he resets his router or something. You know? What I mean? Yeah. That's not yeah. bad. Just I'm in a commercial. You know. Yeah. You can see the brick around him. That's what's uh, we're in causing a, a lot we're of it. That's what it is. Building, right? Yeah. It's, 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 it's the location. Building. Yeah, it's a problem. yeah, that's where the connectivity issues come Yeah, come in. Um, we'll we'll see, try we'll to roll I, with it. Yeah, I'll try to get to another room. Like, okay, yeah. No, that sounds, th th that sounds good. We'll give you a chance to well, get to another can, room. We can show some stuff. Yeah, so there you go. This is a new AR pistol, Stalker. Yeah, man. So I just, I didn't, I'm house sitting, dog sitting. So I don't have any, I brought a couple things to show off. Yeah. And of course, you can do I your, gotta save, I got to, I save stuff for uh Tuesday or Wednesday, whenever we go. But yeah. yeah, man, I like, I know he doesn't, he never had this gun, but um, you know, he had the grease gun and stuff, but I, 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 he always has a big rifle, but I'm like, isn't he like kind of a tracker? You know, he's like a, a guy that would be hunting down like predators predators in the jungle and stuff like wouldn't you want something little kind of you know he's got the silencer and everything or the suppressor so yeah um, he's a ranger so yeah Ooh. yeah he's a ranger so it's like you know i don't know i don't i see pictures with him with big rifles it doesn't make sense to me but here's his beach head yeah <laughs> really going scuba diving but it's cool because i don't have any divers i'm not as talented as romo i don't make torpedo and all that very few people are as talented as romo oh right. there's ryan so, yeah, so, just a you know, but this is the beachhead uh, loadout, the scuba loadout. So if you want to, you know, yeah, it's it's pretty dope. Hey, and for folks, those movie Snake Eyes figures that are going to be clearanced off for just a couple bucks, you can pick up the Gridiron Diver Pack. Smart. And because it is all in a black suit, it actually looks like an operator. Oh, that's cool. So, no, that's dirt that's cheap smart. figure. Take a little uh, either rubbing alcohol or, or some nail polish yeah. remover. You can take off the Rashikagi, but it works for just a, a quick kit bash for the figure. That's awesome. And then, yeah, that's uh, awesome. of course, my fave right now is this crazy loadout yeah. kit for the Vipers. Oh, so you, the, get the, the the, you got the bloody chainsaw. I'm going to eventually have to get it. So that's sick. I think I have pretty much all of the stuff that they had, the bloody, like the, the regular chainsaw they had. I picked that up because it so was just like. My bat, my battle android trooper has the, has the chainsaw holding because it does come with hands. So I ha he's holding that chainsaw. But once we get dr more dreadnoughts, they're definitely getting that chainsaw. Like especially yeah. Buzzer. You know, he's getting that chainsaw yeah. for sure. That's. That's the only reason I bought it is like that's going to be Buzzer's chainsaw because it's covered in blood. It's perfect. It's perfect. So one of my bats has it for now. But but these, I mean, the plug-ons for the bats, it's just, it's so easy and smart to just to add on. And it makes your bats so cool. look badass. Yeah, you need the stand because it's so heavy on top. <laughs> and those classified, we know the legs are very wobbly and shaky. Yeah. The ankles. Yeah. So it's like they, they tip over if you make them too top heavy. A lot of my alley vipers and bats, because of the loadouts, they fall over. So get get yourself some gridiron studio stands. Yes. 
I have those as well too. Mm -hmm. Well, it looks like uh, looks like Mark got a better signal right now. Yeah, now um, he's in a courtroom. All right. <laughs> the Hall of Justice. The, the Hall of Justice. Well, we no, go, we got to uh, Iron Man. So Am yeah, we got to see. Yeah, you're better now. We got to see uh, what superhero um, he is for secret identity How's wise. Uh, Am I uh, delayed still or what? You might be a on like a one bad, second delay. Not bad. Yeah. We'll just we'll just roll with it a little bit. But yeah, Mark, it sounds like um, you know, you had some popularity with the Mythic Legion scale, which is good to hear because like the Mythic Legions figures obviously come with better weapons than the initial G.I. Joe classified figures. So if you're getting like extra if you're getting some traction there with the Mythic Legions crowd, that's that's great to hear. Um I collect Mythic Legions myself, um, at least on an on and off basis. So it's nice to have that option in the 112 scale for sure. Um yeah, so um, so you've said basically the one twelfth is, is your most popular yeah. scale. It's, it was, those are enjoyable for us. You know. The what? That's right. Yeah, hmm. we're we're very um, we're very one to right now. We we try to get as much one eighteen stuff as we can out, um, but one eighteen one twelve really like. Uh, we, we see a road ahead, knowing that knowing that Hasbro's committed to this line. We have no problem. We're gonna we'll keep making a bunch of stuff for it. So, yeah, and it seems like every few days there's another loadout coming out. Like last week, you can ask Ryan and some of the boys there that uh, I went Gaga. Like I saw the mortar loadout, and I'm like, oh my god, you know, we can get a short fuse now. <laughs> you know what I mean? And um, it's it's hitting the third party game pretty well yeah. because. I uh, I collected a lot of third-party Transformers back in the day. And a lot of times a third-party company would beat the official company to market. And it gets to a point where, like, um, you take the Transformer Hound, for example. Like, the third party was ahead of the official companies by years. By the time Takara came out with a Hound, prices had skyrocketed. And I paid, like, almost half for my third-party figure, like, five years earlier i'm just like i'm not getting an official one this is my hound on my shelf and you know um that's kind of how i feel when it when, when a third party company comes comes out and makes some product um so on the on the subject of pricing like could, could you talk a little bit about some of the thought process behind the pricing because obviously they're made in the u.s and occasionally i get a comment in my video if i put some put something up and i've acknowledged it myself that you know like relative to the price of the figure you know the price is a certain way so like can you talk a little bit about the thought process about the uh, the pricing for the kits and the weapons yeah yeah so so firsthand you know mo most people well at this point understand especially the guys that have been following us for a long time you know our all of our product in our own shop i mean literally where i'm standing so we have, uh, I mean, we run a ton of 3D printers, and and it, with the 3D printing technology, it's it's not as easy as it looks. Mm -hmm. Looks, I mean, it, people think you push a button and there's a part and you put it in a bag. Well, I, I guess you know there may be some some guys that are doing that that way, but for us to get the finish to be a, a real product, what we consider a real product, a lot of steps mm -hmm. we take from really from completion even like post-production for us takes a lot longer than production so we try to like we try to help people understand that this isn't you know injection molded so there's not a thousand parts running an hour there's there's as many as we can get on a print bed and then how many rotations or we can get is how fast we can produce now we are mm. consistently trying to, you guys, especially you guys have been with me a long time, like Travis and Ryan. If if you look back to the beginning, what we were able to offer in like the first loadout, uh, like our first deuce and a half loadout, compared to what right. we offer now, like in that mortar set, there's yep. there's almost I mean they're doubles in set for the same price. So that's usually what's been happening now is we're able to get more for the money. And that's because of, you know, we've gone from very, you know, very, very few machines to a ton of machines. And we're in the manufacturing capability we have in house by a larger facility and literally doubling the number in which we can produce. 
So by doing that, it's where we can keep price as low as we can keep it and, and try to get you as much stuff as we can get. That's always been our, our, our goal. Yeah. I know some people think, oh, this is just so expensive compared to a figure. But to us, um, if you really take a look at each piece, we make sure each is painted according to whatever the spec of that, that loadout. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Even blue, and those are really hard paints to deal with. They're not, it's not like throwing some hunter green on something, you know? Um, and so, you know, that's, that's really where we're at on price. Mm -hmm. And I, and I think people need to understand when you talk like resin printing. So not only do you, it, it, it takes, it, it uses UV light for each layer. So you get a cleaner print, but then after you're done printing it, you have to put it in PLA, or I'm sorry, in IPA, so isopropic alcohol, to help it cure. You have to put it in more UV light to help it cure. And you can't just handle that stuff. You got to wear gloves. It's got to be a well-ventilated area. And then it cures, and then you can take it. You'll also have failed prints where you might get half the prints that work and the rest that don't. So you just got to throw that stuff away. Plus, you have to do the upkeep. Uptake or upkeep on the machines, as well as then go through and have somebody paint all of those things in a lower run than what you would do with injection molding. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, and um, also on that same front, like you know, whenever I do a video, I always tell people, okay, so here's the price of the item. This is what you're getting, just so I don't come off like just a fanboy. <laughs> you know, I talked to some of you guys about that before, and. Um, I hate to say like I'm used to it to some extent because if you look at some of the and I always fall back to Transformers because they were early they were early in the third party game. If you look at the right. DNA upgrade kits, exactly. those are some gorgeous upgrade kits. But if you want to get the upgrade kit for Grimlock for the Studio eighty six Grimlock, it's the same price as the figure. You want to get the uh, the upgrade kit for uh, Motormaster for Menasaur, That's a sixty seventy dollar kit, and it makes your figure taller. It makes it look better. It makes it pop on the shelf. It's the nature of targeted upgrade kits that are specific to make a character that character right so um that's why well, i'm also, not yeah go ahead also also ken so compare i like to compare all right so you get your 22 20 it used to be 19.99 it was 22.99 figure compare once you throw on the gridiron loadout compare that classified figure to Maybe not a Mezco because you're going to get like a million accessories and like three or four heads, but like anything else. Like, you know, SH like figure arts. Yeah. Effects. Anything international toys, SH figure arts. Yeah. Anything like that, that you're going to pay 55 to 90 bucks. Right. And then you compare your, your souped up, loaded out gridiron toys. And it's like you're getting the same value for almost like 45 to 55 bucks right after yep. you put a gridiron toy but yep. then compare it to an international toy and it's and those are like 55 to 100 so yeah you for know, sure i know joe fans are used to paying 399 back in 1984 but <laughs> i mean come on co compare the loaded out bat loaded out alley viper loaded out duke and compare that to your international toys and it's and it's, mm -hmm. and it's not as bad as some people are making it out to be it seems fair yeah and, and even super and, seven and, and, and it's not coming from a factory overseas where everything is mass produced and cheap and you don't even know if the paint is going to be right these guys are doing it themselves handcrafting in their own home so it's like you can't compare it yeah yeah, yeah. And, that, that's, and that's what I wanted to reach the understanding of. That's why I brought up some of the other upgrade kits that are targeted for a character um, that end up being, you know, pricier than you expect because, you know, you're used to like, okay, one or two weapons cost this and you're like, oh, wow, this character loadout kit is this price. And there's that, there's always going to be that, that initial sticker shock, but then well, well, here's you get a good the example. incremental value. Here's a good example. If you go on eBay and you want a different head sculpt for Marvel Legends, GI Joe, whatever, those are going to run you 45 to 60 bucks for just the head sculpt. Painted. 45 yeah. to 60 bucks, and you can get yeah. two loadouts from Gridiron, full loadouts for your character for the price of one head sculpt on eBay. For anyone, yeah. you want a Thor, a better Thor. Like I bought the Scarface Cobra Officer, that, that runs you 35 bucks. 
So for 25, 30 bu five bucks, you get a full loadout. Come on, guys. Seriously. So this is the new Snake Eyes loadout. So you get the backpack, which has a peg, because there are some you know folks saying I want peg. The the rope that's attached to it is actually elastic. Mm -hmm. So that that's there. So that's the backpack. And then you get a quiver, which you know, oh look, it also comes with an arrow too. So and then I also get the crossbow. And they also put on a little rubber band so that if that breaks, you can replace it. But the crossbow itself is pretty detailed. And it's a softer resin, so it gives a little. It's not the stiff that it used to be. You get a radio. You mm -hmm. also get the Uzi. And guess what? The silencer comes off the Uzi. So this was $34.99 on Gridiron's website. Yep. And this there's takes... A, there's also a walkie-talkie in there, too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yep. the that light. takes this Snake Eyes, and it makes him the badass Snake Eyes that you always wanted to have. Yep. Well, that's the thing, right? And then depending on the weekend that you get it, sometimes it goes down to $29 or $32.99. And like weekends like right now, um, Mark is offering a promotion to um, allow some extra an extra weapon per order. So when you, really, when you really look at it and you compare it to other toy lines that are out there and you look at other companies that are charging 55 to 65 per figure you know you can sort of walk your way into the value um but it's just there's a little bit of sticker shock because joe fans right now aren't used to it classified is relatively new right the modern gi joe is relatively new whereas other mm -hmm. toy lines who have been doing it for a while i always mm -hmm. go back to transformers maybe you, yeah and travis talked about marvel legends a little bit that those modern lines that have been around for a little while right um <clears throat> Yeah, think about all those those folks who are buying those McFarland DC characters, where you know whatever the direction is, there's no guns for those figures, so you're having to go out and find some sort of replacement for any of those figures. And you know, Gridiron gives you that opportunity. And if you go and look on like Etsy on any of the other stores that you have 3D designers and printers, it's going to cost you right around the same for any of these these 3D printed items. It and to will. Travis's point, you're not having to order it from China and have it shipped to you, so you're getting it relatively quick. Mm -hmm. You are. I yeah. got my order. I was giving. I actually, it's funny because I was giving Mark shit because I'm like, dude, if I don't get my stuff, we can't do the show. We were supposed to do the show last Thursday, mm -hmm. and it got there at Thursday morning, and I felt like the biggest dick. And I was like, ah, oh, man, because we pushed the show. So on a toy kind of mood, we're gonna have Mark on again with the guys. Uh, welcome to Terradrome either Tuesday or Wednesday, because I was like, ah, I need my loadout to show everybody. I need my stuff. I need my haul. And he shipped it in like, I got it in like two and a half days. So props to Gridiron, super fast shipping. So you can't go wrong, guys. And oh, it's fair like enough. $4, $4 flat for like, I paid $4 for a head sculpt to be shipped. And it's $4 flat for the whole order. Come on, in three days. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Break. Love your passion. Love your passion, Travis. Hey, and I, sure. text him. I'm, I told him to go outside on his phone. I don't know. Maybe awesome. I can even call him if you want. You see. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah, let me, uh, let me do that. Anthony and Romo, thank you for the super chat. Um, don't see a message there, but that's uh, that's um, all good. I, yeah. Speaking of people who are passionate, Tony's underscore figs on Instagram. Um, boy, does he ever does he ever do stuff um, that makes the gridiron and the combination of other six-inch figures – look good so give him a follow on uh, on instagram if you can did my camera uh suddenly stop focus i think it did I think my camera stopped there focusing. You go. Thank okay. you. <laughs> that's funny I, I still haven't figured out the webcam yet on this and i know hans chow had a uh, had a question so we'll see whether or not ooh, it says mark's trying to come back in uh hans i'm gonna do something real quick is Gridiron going to do a short sword for Snake Eyes, like the Resolute one? I, too, pay dollar for one of these ninja swords. Not sure if that's the name. Yeah. So we'll get to we'll get to his question in a second here. It looks like Mark's able to come back. Kevin Johnson says, what up, people? He was in the chat yesterday for... Um, Hans, Let me just, just to answer your question, there is a short sword. So you can get a short sword and there's two ninja loadout kits uh where you can you know stick 
the swords on so you can do the resolute snake eyes if you want to. Let me get this back the way it was. I've got it all screwed up now. But this is the Storm Shadow kit that's currently out there. But I put it on because I picked up a whole bunch of these movie Snake Eyes figures because they're so dirt cheap. But it gives you the two side swords. He also has the, this is what's amazing. Get it off. So again, that's elastic, not a string. That's elastic. So yep. yes, you do get a little arrow. Yeah. So you have uh, a bow and arrow. That's really cool. That's really cool. Yeah. And there's throwing stars. Those yep. do come mm -hmm. off, and you can use those with your figures too. Mm -hmm. So hopefully those in the chat are um, pretty impressed by what you're seeing, because like as much as I've got a few character loadouts, um, Travis and Ryan have done a lot more experimentation with their loadouts, right? Like I'm more, I just take the standard loadout, I go to Gridiron site, and I follow the exact layout of what Mark's put up for his uh, for his thing. I haven't kind of ventured on my own yet. Um, but it's oh, not just loadouts, too. So, Marauder you know, the guys at Gridiron just launched a whole bunch of new Pew Pews. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if you're looking for the MP5s, there's a couple different versions of those out there. There's the Scar Sniper Rifle, um, you know, the, the AR Pistol. There's tons of stuff. If you want to create an armory, Mark and, and those crazy mad scientist boys of his, they have, you know, loadout kits where you can actually get rifle racks with ARs or with AKs. So you can set up your dials any way you want them. So Mark's and, on mute. Yeah. Mark's on mute, guys. He, he oh. can probably unmute himself. That's fine. It's fine. But welcome back, Mark. All right, there we go. We're good. Am I back? Am I back? Yeah. You are back, yeah. and it seems like your signal has cleared back. up. <laughs> Had to go save the world a few yeah, times first, to, right, in the Iron Man suit. Down and start over. All good. I'm going to boost your volume, too. Well, I'm glad. Um, yeah, you guys seem like you're handling this very well. Yeah, sorry. I've just boosted your volume so we can hear you. Um, so I guess one of my questions, Mark, is when are we going to see a Barrett 50? So I can tell you it's on the list. We tried to get – there was some debate. We were working on – I think you just saw the Scar Sniper came out. Yes, I own it. We're trying to <laughs> – because that, that Scar Sniper marks our third sniper-type rifle. And so we're trying to kind of – we're trying to – we're trying to – instead of putting a bunch of them out at the same time, we're trying to spread them out a little bit so that – Guys that get one sniper rifle can kind of enjoy that for a while before they have to get a new one, you know. Um, but that's that's definitely on the list for sure. Okay. That's so cool to hear because, like, and the funny thing about it is, like, someone like me and some some of these folks know this. I'm not a weapons or a guns kind of guy. Like, I don't know the names of them, but like, you can tell when something has that sleek yeah. look and the more military type of look, um, even with kind of the naked eye. Um, and some people have commented a bit about the stands here. I, I did want to ask the question. Sorry, go ahead. There's a lot of customers like that. Yeah, for sure. Um, what There's I did want to ask like that, that don't maybe don't have technical. Right. Um, I did want to ask though, Mark, if we, hopefully we've got your connection still here. Um, okay. It looks like we do. Um, has there been thought about making some uh, generic head packs? Like just doing like a three pack of heads or something like that, so that we could just without sacrificing our Marvel Legends figures <laughs> left and right. Yes. <laughs> oh, oh, we're absolutely working on that. That's that's uh, really high on the priority. On the priority list. Good. Okay. So yeah, I think uh, Ken, my my biggest issue here is I don't have an if I'm not a super customizer like Ryan and KJ and Tony, I what am I gonna do with a loadout if I don't I don't want to keep using Duke and Flint. So if we get those custom heads, yes, then we can buy the generic troopers, you know, like the Delta Force or whatever, then I have use I'll have use for all of them. So the head sculpts are definitely that would be a multi-pack would be clutch. Been begging for that forever. 
Yeah, um, that's that's great to hear because, like, for me personally, right? Like, I have a booth at a toy show, so sometimes I buy collections, I keep pieces I need, and I end up with a bunch of extra figures. There's some figures I can sacrifice the heads for there, but then you end up with these spare bodies that are just headless sometimes, and then right. you're like, right. what do you do with that? I know Ryan sometimes has the other issue where he has too many extra heads rather than rather than the bodies, but um, yeah. Um, well, you got a lot of fans in the uh, in the chat here, uh, Mark and uh, Gridiron. So now that you've talked us through your workshop setup, I guess you're set up the way you are. There's no thought about potentially going to a China factory at some point in time. Then is there, Mark? I don't think it's his day for Wi-Fi. Probably not. It's, yeah. Uh... Yeah, it's not a safe for Wi-Fi. And I'm not sure. I think, and here, I'm going to probably do more shilling. Just get it out of the way. But I kind of like the fact that they can quickly turn around a lot of these new designs because they don't have to go through that factory process. And Fair he can enough. print them and get them out a lot sooner. I mean, when they did the Kickstarter for the Howitzer, I mean, that was like two or three months and they had that, you know, out shipping to folks. Travis was, was it, doing it right away. <clears throat> so, you know, I, I think it's a blessing and a curse it, to, to not have the factory, but it's also nice that you can quickly turn around stuff when you need to. And with how this hobby is with not knowing when you're going to get figures or if you get figures because you have a hookup somewhere, you can get, you know, the stuff that you want for them. Like, for the twins when they come out i know that i need to get you know those mp5 you know the the submachine guns for them because i'm going to need to have them for the twins because that's going to be more representative of what i remember them as as a kid so but, you know we'll see yeah and i mean to me the uh um the twins look pretty good on their own but just just to be able to have that option right like to each their own right like everybody's mileage varies as far as their preferences are concerned right some people would would like to figure just the way it is out of packaging like stalker i didn't upgrade him travis did right i didn't upgrade my twins ryan did right um oh so there's, speaking of yeah. twins speaking of twins i may be yeah. having them for the gridiron show and uh, i got some special weapons for them so stay tuned so <laughs> fingers crossed fingers crossed we'll Good see it's coming from new york so even with priority mail and this holiday weekend it who knows yeah. if it'll come in but yeah um and hans has asked here i think he arrived a bit late he was wondering about the one 118 scale or staying in 112 they do have a 118 18th yeah. scale um it's just been it, 112 just been selling better that's the part that mark did say uh, a little earlier on in the show was that uh, 112 is his main with their 118 scale most of the pew pews that they they sell come in a three pack so it's you get a really good deal for those 118th scale and they all match up to the 112 scale because quaid is just this mad genius scientist who can make this stuff happen quaid is one of his sons right yes yeah right. it's a it's a family affair it, it really is it's you know mark and his two sons uh, and i think his daughters help out as well too you know they they all pitch in to make gridiron successful mark you might have to go outside buddy like outside outside <laughs> it's probably hot it's like 120 degrees so you don't want to go outside this any better i think you still cut out a little a bit. little bit uh how's this the wife Might have to reset that router. Any, yeah. Any better? But, you know, Ken, you know, I'm not knocking Hasbro's designs for the for the weapons that they've included. I understand they can't match up exactly to what the weapons are in real life. That's why I lean a little bit more towards gridiron stuff because i can <laughs> you know get the newer stuff ruben and tony are ruthless well those are <laughs> those, those are two of your key customizers right like uh, tony and uh ruben 
Yeah, I've heard of Ruben yeah. many many times before. We haven't. I don't think we've connected one to one before. So I'm glad to see him in the chat because when I go to the classified groups, Ruben stuff is everywhere. Yeah, Tony stuff is everywhere. Yeah, they're living. So, those guys are living legends. Man, well, yeah, on, in this in yeah this customizer game. Uh, hopefully on Tuesday, Wednesday, whenever we do it, Mark's home, <laughs> not at the studio. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Well, we're, we're we're fighting through it, and we got we got some we of our are, questions but... answered. Yeah. 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 Hey, um, he was he bought that extra printer, so let's give him a break. You know, it was internet or the printer. So I'll take the printer any day. <laughs> yeah, at least uh, we didn't know the internet was gonna be an issue today, right? But I mean we knew we needed that printer. So is it possible it's like a stream yard thing? Because when we did zoom shows, he did it from there and it came in good and zoom sucks. So I don't know if StreamYard require more bandwidth because it's live. Maybe that I'm I'm not sure about that. Ryan might know more, but our connection yeah, is okay. So because we didn't record live, so maybe that's why. Maybe you record live, it's like a lot tougher on the Wi-Fi. I don't know. You would yeah. think it would because you're broadcasting. Uh, right. You're broadcasting a signal right then on this. Well, maybe. maybe maybe that's the thing. He hasn't done a live show as far as I know, so maybe he had, it seemed fine before because it was just on Zoom recorded. And right, and live, so I just want but, to address the Wi-Fi thing because I want Mark on the show. <laughs> I want Mark <laughs> to be here, but and if he's in an industrial building, you know, with the brick and the metal and stuff, that's gonna always yeah interfere yeah. with Wi-Fi signals. So yeah, it's probably not gonna work live at his joint, but he could do a recorded show. Good to know for yeah. next time. You just don't yeah, absolutely, you can't go, absolutely can't go live. You'll have to like do it and and post it later. Well, I mean, Let's, yeah. Sorry, Let's just be honest. He's got that Cobra internet. We know that it's not the best. You know, it's not the Joe internet that we're all used to. I thought he had the Mars Industries internet, you know, the Destro, uh, the Destro way. Um, yeah, I like this classified location. But I'm, <laughs> um, yeah, so. I mean, we got a lot of our questions answered here anyway. Like he talked about how he started, um, the process behind it. Ryan, you talked through a little bit of it as well. He's doing extra head packs. Um, you know, he said that, you know, what the most popular scale is. Um, we've talked a bit about, I don't know if I asked international shipping when we were off air or on air, but I do know that he is he did, doing international shipping. Yeah, he you froze, asked yeah. Him out. Yeah, it froze but, but it is, but it is actually um, on the website. Like you can get international international shipping um it shows that up now i'm not sure if that's a recent edition or not but either way he did, right he did say that they're working on that so cobra that's a internet <laughs> cobra la, 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 la. Yeah. we got him we got him hey we're still smiling <laughs> over here mark we're still we're still jolly so it, it it, out. It, it better <laughs> No matter where you go, <laughs> 56k dial up. I love it. I love it. We're back in the AOL uh, early 1997 days of uh, AOL. Made in America online. Made in America. <laughs> we're doing this. We're doing this. We started okay, and then we were we're slugging. We're slugging through this right now. Thanks to everyone in the chat for being uh, for being so passionate about all this, though. You well, know, it's. Yeah. It's it's oh, this no, is what this is real life, right? So, yeah, like I said, well, this is what you get when you, you know, marry your shot. Okay. He's got to so keep all those uh, Kobe right satellites out of him. Wait, let's hear Mark. Let's hear Mark. Let's see if we can we can hear him. Exactly. Yeah, can you hear me at all? Test, yes. Test. All right. We got him. We got him. Cool. Stay there. <laughs> Don't move. <laughs> Stay in that spot. I'll answer. Really. I'm standing right here. I'm not moving. Mm, <laughs> Anything? Matter. Can you guys hear me? All? Yeah, we can hear you, but it's choppy. It's a delay, a little bit of a delay, but that's okay. How about this? You talk. Can you hear me a we'll listen. Hey, let's, yep. let's... How about this? You okay. talk. We'll listen. We'll listen. Stop. We'll okay, talk. I'm just going to show you something. Cool. Okay. I'm just going to show you. Let me see. It, uh, since... Let me see if I can get the thing turned around. I don't know. Hmm. 
the thing. Oh, damn. Ooh. That's Quaid. What's up, Quaid? Hey, Quaid. Oh, my Lord. Damn. These guys are brilliant. Guaranteed not to break any thumbs. Holy moly. We're getting the You look. can't hear me, but hopefully you saw that. We can hear you now. Okay. So that's a little teaser. At least while you can hear me. Yeah. That gave me a zap of excitement, Mark. I'm just saying. <laughs> so you guys. Looks awesome. So. Yep. Uh, I, so you know exactly what we're dealing with. So and for folks in the chat, if you don't know, like. Quaid actually went through and had to design that complete item in a 3D environment so that that can then be printed using the resin printers that they have. So he had to spend time to develop that item that we just saw. So that just shows you how much work goes into all of these designs as well. Mm hmm Killer. Absolutely killer. We got the look from the, from the Falcon. I love it. Yeah, yeah, and that's usually the the issue. Mm -hmm. So, Mark, while I've got you, um, Ryan already partially answered this, but it seems like you're leaning. Oh, you're you're frozen, but hopefully you can hear my question. Um, oh no, you're back again. Good. Um, it looks to me like you're committed to the American yeah, I style. Can I can hear you. Good. You're committed to the American style production. Um, it doesn't look like you're too keen to get out into the uh, mass production market of um, the world of China with the factories. Hopefully that went through. My question get through? Yeah. Can you hear me at all? Oh, we can hear you now, but did my question get through? Can you hear me at all? Yeah, we can. Yeah, I got your question. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yes, yeah, now we can. Slight delay, but we can get you. We got you. Okay, if you can hear me, um, we, are, we are splitting... Uh, we're with other companies to hopefully bring a, how do I put it, like, but it'll be separate from our product. Okay. So you're working on another product with, with another company that's going through a factory, but it's separate from Gridiron. I think I heard that right. Exactly. Yes. And we'll have more information about that shortly. Good to that's hear. Not so. a, that's not a bad idea. What we'll they're doing. We'll have more information about that shortly. Yeah. Do we want to try this? Yeah. He could call me. Tell him to call me, and I'll put him on speakerphone, and I'll, okay. I'll just get off camera too. Okay. I'll just. Be, I'll be the purveyor here. So, Mark, call uh, call Travis off, and then we can we can just skip the streamyard thing. You can just call, so you can we can use your cell phone signal rather than the uh, Wi-Fi signal. I don't think. Right, here we go. Hey, caller number nineteen, you're live on the air. Okay. <laughs> yeah, he's gonna give that. A, he's gonna give that a try. All right, guys, be quiet so Mark can talk. Let's see if this works. Go ahead, Mark. What? I got you on speaker. Why is it so low? there yeah i'm here just got to speak up a little bit i think okay how's that is that better i'm gonna boost your volume a little a little yeah, bit Travis. i mean i have it right to the microphone so 
Okay. So if I talk louder like this, you yep. guys can hear me? Perfect. Perfect. Okay. Good. Okay. Fire away. Yeah. Uh, that's, that's awesome. Like, uh, you're, you're clearer than you've ever been. So cool. So you've got a project coming up. That's, uh, going to be a little different from gridiron and that's going to go through a partner factory. Gridiron will is committed to the American production. That's what we, we gathered, uh, just to summarize one twelfth is your most popular scale. So, uh, you show us some behind the scenes with what Quaid was working on. Um, is there anything else that you want the sort of fans to be aware of coming down the pipeline? Is there anything you want to tell us, you know, uh, I mean, we have, you know, we have to, you know, this is a very competitive market, so we have to keep everything pretty close to our, you know, chest a little bit. We're trying to, we're trying to branch. I can tell you this, we are definitely working to branch out with other companies. And what's happening is we're, we're really finding, um, we're, we're receiving a lot of interest to do projects. And so uh, what makes that interesting for us is that, we can create things that can go to factory, but we can still hold on to the quality and the, you know, the super, like the super realistic detail that you can't get from a factory. We can still produce that kind of premium line. Mm. So, and now this dog is going to act up right when Mark stops. <laughs> oh, good. This is, this is the clearest he's ever been. It's right? not my day, man. It's not my day. No, no, no. It's like, yeah, I had to let the dog in because it's 115 in the valley over here. Oh. And so it, I had the dog outside for a little while, and I'm like, I ain't doing that. I'm watching these dogs <laughs> not killing them. And so I brought That's the right. dog in, and then, yeah, it's going to, you know. But go ahead, Mark. We're good now. The dog went to the kitchen. Yeah. You have the floor. You have the floor, Mark. You have the floor. We have a, we have, most guys know we have a long list of items that we are trying to get to as fast as we can. Um, but like I was mentioning earlier with the mortar set, like being able to see how many parts are starting to get into these sets, even the gung ho, that grenade launcher loadout, there was a bunch of parts in there. So we're trying to do our best to get people more bang for the buck, but but still retain the same level of detail and, 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 and finish. So that's kind of where we're at. You guys awesome. are doing a hell of a job. So, you know, oh, the you, whole man. team Appreciate is it. awesome. Oh. You know, and, and yeah, I got to give you, fun. there's been a lot of cool stuff. You know, props to, if you've had, you know, any issues and you contacted gridiron, you guys are great to work with. You replace stuff. If we have issues with it and, you know, it, it makes it easy to do business with you. Oh, uh, well, and we, I mean, from the beginning, that was our goal. Like we wanted to make sure, especially coming through, you know, coming out of the COVID thing where nobody answers a phone. We wanted to make sure that our phone number was on everything. So when you, you know, if you had a problem at all, you just call us and we'll take care of you. And most people know if they've dealt with us before, Customer service is absolutely number one to us. So we understand the nature of the product. Occasionally there's a force break or there's something that happens, but we have, um, you know, we, we stand behind the product. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, and we thank you. We thank you for that. And for, you know, providing us with extra options to kind of make certain, certain figures look better. Um, and to, like I always say, like, you know, I never get tired of saying it, that we're in something of an artisan, renaissance period you know if, yeah. if the if the 1980s uh late 70s early 90s if that era was like a golden prosperous you know age that we lived in you know like you get you, you have your golden age yeah. in greek mythology and then you come into the renaissance where you know the, the the kid fan became the creator and that's what we're seeing here we're seeing it with so oh. many of the three and three quarter inch lines we're seeing it with the other six inch lines that are coming out be it military or um, the the medieval uh, high fantasy stuff you mentioned earlier, so it's great to hear about the projects on the go. Um, you know, like you started international shipping, which we which we talked about earlier, because that was I don't know when that began, but uh, there was a while there where I heard you guys didn't do it, and then I checked this morning, and I'm like, oh, it's there. <laughs> That's cool. It was strange because we we were so um, we were so excited for international shipping. You know, our other business had always done it. But man, it was the COVID had really like really struck some fear into a lot of like uh, imports. So like as we were, I mean, we were just finding things were getting returned all the time. We we opened up initially to everybody, 
Mm-hmm. And so then we had to be very selective in who we were shipping to. Yeah. Uh, yeah. We have, we've opened up Japan. We've opened up Canada, UK. Uh, we're working on Australia now, France. So there's, there's a lot of, we have a lot of fans in some of these countries that we want to get product to. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And uh, I, I know I pulled up his comment on screen, but I wanted to shout out uh, Vagon for for uh, being the one to kind of jump in and say, throw throw Mark on speakerphone, because now we're now we're clear as day on that. Um, oh, good. Now, and no one um, wants to look at me anyway. So that's I get it. <laughs> We want to see what's in the shop, regardless, though. So yeah, you know, we, we, we'll look at you. Um, yeah. So I, I mean, even with Canadian shipping, like I was looking at what it costs. Um, the good thing about it, though, like for me and some 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 people know this, like I, I I ship some stuff through Ryan. Like some of the stuff that I buy off you, Mark, um, it actually goes to Ryan, and then and then and then it comes to me. So that's. Um, but even if, even yeah. without that option, there are like for Cana- for some Canadian people who were in the who were in the live chat, you can reship things through either cross border pickups or shipsy i'm just talking to the canadian viewers here and they will sure. be able to reship stuff for you if for some reason the direct usps airmail is more expensive and it costs yeah you'll have to do a bit of trial and error like set up your own like mailbox in the u.s and then have it reship that might work out cheaper for shipping um so just if, if you're if you're a canadian buyer just be resourceful and be willing to go through those extra steps um to be able to get your yeah, stuff. i can tell you i can tell you with our canadian guys up there that are that are really really avid like collectors we've had a lot of them join together when they make their orders because the way we do we have a flat rate but we're doing um first class or we're doing um priority international for canada yes. that's been the easiest way for us to get stuff over there that doesn't get rejected yes but the price is higher but it's flat and if everybody comes together it usually works out Oh, absolutely. And, and Ryan was telling me earlier too, that the ship, the international, the, the, the uh, priority, even though it's more expensive, um, it's more reliable. Cause if you try the first class shipping, the USPS first class shipping, um, it's cheaper, but it'll take longer. Um, I think you actually have to go to the post office to do it. Um, physically right. so i did i did not know that right because it's funny because we have on our end here we have something called chit chats express and that's the usps yep. partner here in canada to send outgoing mail so there are times when someone will be like ken i thought you were in canada how come you sent me a usps parcel i'm like we have a partner on this end but yes for me to actually go and do that i have to drop it off physically at the usps partner right there's an extra step in the tracking that says receive that that's for outgoing incoming i didn't realize that you had to go through the same thing right um, sure. Yep. So, yeah, there's there's that, and you know, you all have the talented um, designers um, over there behind the scenes. But you know, I also wanted to open it up to the uh, to the chat potentially. Um, if anybody has a question in there, you know, we got a little bit of extra time with uh, with Mark. Um, if anybody has yep. a question they want to that they want to th- th- pop, and everyone's been very polite in the chat so far. I'm very respectful, so I'm grateful for that for this good. particular show. <laughs> well, yeah, you know, I thought I thought, and I, I kind of warned everybody on on Tuesday. I was like, look, I know I got a couple comments about pricing, but don't when yeah. we have Marcus a guest, please be polite. And everybody was right, and we addressed it right up front, like when I talked about the third party. Well, no, like, you know, the funny part about that is I, I understand. I mean, we've you know we've you know I think. I think Chris was one of our guys that started the whole wallet assassin thing, if I remember right. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> we use that as a term of endearment, so it's kind yeah. of funny when we hear it. We don't hear that as a as a as a criticism. We hear it as like, man, if if people are willing to work as hard as they are, and understand the work that we're putting in on our end, and we're making that trade for product, that's something we're proud of, and we will not let anybody down. Like that's mm-hmm. the thing. We understand what it takes to get that dollar. And so we want to make sure that the product you're getting in your hand is worth that. So Absolutely. it's like, if so, yeah, if somebody doesn't want to spend that much money, that's kind of a, a their own issue, right? That's something that everybody has to have their own budget and what they're going to spend. But with a product we're making, at least you have confidence that it is that value. So that's yep. that's what we're doing. Absolutely right, and um, that's why I always, when I review Gridiron stuff, I always have to address it because I don't want people to log into GridironProps.com and expect it. Okay, it's fifteen dollars free shipping. Like I'm just hoping that they don't. That's why I always have to put up the screenshot with the price so that people get the sticker shock from the reviewer and then see what the reviewer's end 
end product looked like on their shelf and let them decide, okay, did I get incrementally enough value? Like I'm talking about Duke. And for me, that was worth it through and through. Right. Um, yeah. As, well, as the best like example. That was, that was such, that was such an early on set. If new, new, um, you know, new collectors coming in now, the stuff that we're doing now is just, I mean, it's, it's, we are constantly working to innovate. So each, each set gets better. So we're mm -hmm. trying to, you know, make sure that the value is actually increasing each time. But, you know, it's one of those things where, uh, you know, you can't make everybody happy. We're trying to kind of keep it where the, the true collector, the one that really understands what we're doing, that's going to be who's going to buy the product. And so we want to make sure we serve them the best. And, and, and it's cool that you're diversifying too, because like, like you've kind of implied here is that the gridiron home base and the workshop, that big workshop you showed us um, with Quaid working as well behind the scenes that that shows us that's kind of where your core brand is going to be, but you're working on other stuff in China. So you're, you, you may have stuff shipping right. from both China and the U S as you diversify oh, your yeah. toy lines and your products. And that's, that's going to really set the footprint for your parent. I don't know if the parent company is called gridiron. Um, yeah, Gridiron Studios is yes. Is the parent so that that'll always be the parent company and the and the main That's brand. Right. Okay, so I wasn't sure because sometimes people have a different name for the parent company. Because uh, yeah. I talked to you a bit about Delta cool. Seventeen offline. We have a parent company name and a, and a brand yeah. name. Oh, uh, we got a question in the chat here. Um, Hans Chow has asked the question about the vehicles next uh, one twelfth or one eighteenth vehicles next. Yes. So, can I answer that? Are you ready? Absolutely. Yeah. Okay, so so for most of you guys that have been around with us, you know, we did the Kickstarter for the Howitzer, and that was a great experiment for us to kind of see what capabilities we could have with this technology. Well, we we constantly are working to to develop better ways to do that in within the technology because you know having that we're not taking a product to China like a vehicle. And, and we, you know, rightfully so at this point, there's a lot of, you know, with Hasbro doing his tank and now everybody's jumping on. And I know Valverse just said, said something about their vehicle. We're just, um, we're, we really want to find that niche space where we can produce something that people need that they're not going to get anywhere else. And we've already been working on that. And there's, um, there's news coming. We're just, it's, it's a long duration when you're talking and trying to collaborate with other companies. So I don't want to release anything, but we are working on stuff. Absolutely. Well, that's, that's, uh, that's uh, good news. And also um, it allows everyone to know that they got to follow your social media portals. I mean, if you go to gridironprops.com, I've got the link in the description below that should take you to all the portals anyway. Um, but I yeah. do need to update the description with Travis's um, channel name and I'll probably put your Instagram portal on there as well. Um, and for those listening, I'll put a timestamp for when, uh, for when, um, we got on the speaker phone here and cleared up the signal. Yeah. So shout out and thank you to Travis for allowing that to happen. I would have allowed it on my own phone, but I'm international. So if you have WhatsApp, Mark, I would have, <laughs> I would have been okay with that. But, um, um, for phone signal would have been, Mark has my number. It's all good. Yep. <laughs> yep. Right. Yeah. He doesn't answer the damn phone, but he has my number. <laughs> He's better. busy working. No, we spoke for like a good half hour by the pool yesterday, so that was nice. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and it's good to just have you here as one of the boys, one of the crew, Mark, because um, there's only been a limited number of interviews we've been able to see. Like, I know you've gone on Toy Kind of Mood. I know you're going to be on there again soon. Um, and happy two years, by the way, uh, Travis, two-year anniversary for your channel. Well, thank you. Thank you. So, yeah, I guess I'll plug it. Uh, 2 p.m. Pacific time today, 2 p.m. Yeah. Pacific time today. Uh, it might go as long as whatever. It's going to just be a two year, uh, anniversary celebration going to cover everything in toys and predict predictions for PulseCon, And then either Tuesday, Wednesday, cause I have a booking Tuesday. Hopefully we'll do the 10th episode of welcome to the Terradrome with my man, Mark here. And hopefully Ruben get your ass on a stream boy. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> well, everyone wants to hear Marauder Ruben. Um, yeah. So, and you know, plug away, you know, I consider you one of the partner channels, um, Travis, just as I consider uh, Dreadnought Ryan um, and his Island of Misfit yep. Toy Collectors, even yep. if he's anti-subscriber. Um, we get to 100, <laughs> if we get, if we get, if we get Island of Misfit Toy Collectors to 100 subscribers, we all celebrate, even if Ryan mourns. Yep. And we try to get uh, Toy Kind of Mood to 1,000. <laughs> 
to a thousand. Yeah, subscribers. we're almost there. Fifty more. Subscribe, please. I think we got less than fifty nice. to go for a thousand, and hopefully we'll get that by uh, Tuesday or Wednesday and celebrate. So yeah. Yep. Thank yep. you guys. Appreciate it. Yep. I'm trying to get to uh, the two thousand mark myself. The two thousand uh, milestone here myself. Um, nice been online for a little while as, as well. So in getting this network out there and uh, just having Mark talk as one of the boys, one of the collectors here. So it's not yeah. this sort of like behind the scenes, uh, cloak and dagger uh, thing. It's uh, it's quite, uh, quite enlightening to have him on the show and to have um, Travis and Ryan both, because they're both kind of ringers for the brand. Um, and it, it gives that community collaborative feel, right? Yeah. Um, and we're, they we're, got, we're, uh, we're gridiron shills <laughs> yes, we are. <laughs> and proud, damn proud of it. Oh, man. And, I'm, and, I'm, and I, pre man, I appreciated all this community support from the beginning. It's funny because these guys have all, uh, I mean, when they embraced us so early that it took us by surprise, we, we didn't know what to expect when, you know, Clay and I first sat down and then Colin came on board. We just couldn't, you know, we were trying to wrap our head around, how do you penetrate this kind of market? You know, it's been around for 40 years, you know? So we, 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 when we started deciding, let's just make the best product possible and let's see what happens. And we had guys just jumping on right away and, and we've made some just amazing friends. And I, it's like, you know, we couldn't be more grateful. And anybody that knows us, man, that's, that's our thing, man. It's It's all about gratitude to us. Yeah, for sure. So, um, so you know, I'm going to go shilling just because I can, because I'm the island of shilling toys. Um, <laughs> you you want to help somebody who's good people. And Mark and his family have all been good people to all of us. Um, I get folks like, dude, do they give you stuff? I'm like, no, I just really appreciate all the product that they put out. I appreciate the service level that I get. And if somebody is a good mom and pop operation that, that does the right things, right. I'm going to preach you to the highest heavens that I can. So, you know, it, it's easy oh, to, to sell the, how great gridiron is because you guys have been so good to everyone. Oh man. Well, but you know, uh, the only complaint I have is you don't make your shirts in Midwest fluffy guy size. So I don't know if that's something you can work on. Just say it. I'm working on it, man. I'm working on it. I know because I, okay. I mean, I'm typically a two X guy, and I have to wear the three X. So I know, man. I get you. I get you. Yeah. Well, we got to be prepared for those cold winters, Mark. So we we add on a couple more layers of blubber, you know. <laughs> the gridiron hoodies next. We'll have to go through the winter for those. Nice. Yeah. Hey. Oh yeah, man. I appreciate all those kind words, man. I for us. Dude, I, I'm telling you from the bottom of my heart, I mean, we, like right now we're in the middle of the promotion, uh, you know, without plugging this too hard. We're in a right in day two of this four-day Labor Day promotion. Anytime you guys see us do these free gun promotions, that's the best strategy we've found to be able to give back to everybody. It's like the only way I can figure out how to do this right now is, you know, it's nice when you buy a loadout and we're going to give you a $10 gun. You know, that's, that's going to help you to rationalize that price a little better anyway. And then hopefully you get that in your hand and realize what we're trying to do. So that's kind of been our plan. For sure. For sure. Um, yeah. With regards to the shirts and everything, it's always kind of funny because I usually fit just in, into a medium size for everything. But I realize in our market, all my friends are all XL, 2XL, 3XL. So I, I kind of get used to being the little guy <laughs> in, our, in our market. <laughs> The shirts are good though, man. They're nice. We we really took a long time to pick the right brand, and and uh, we've tried to get the right shirts out so that you know guys like Travis can even look good. Yeah, get him good for his acting gig. Totally, what a totally. jerk! Here we oh, go. Man. Oh, right here. I'm not flexing. I'm just showing the. Uh... <laughs> here you yeah. go. You look good. You look good in that Hasbro interview. You know, it looked good. Yeah. Love that. And Len hey, Lenny loves your stuff. He was like, Yeah, he even commented on the shirt. So, Lenny Panzika, uh, so, uh, shout out to him. So hope, happy hope for that. You, uh, when I, I'm going to head east in about a month. Hopefully, I'll be able to grab a beer with him around PulseCon and celebrate oh, a little sure. while. So, super, super get another nice interview. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. I know we're happy to have somebody like that involved. It's awesome. 
Mm -hmm. So what's what's been the most uh, popular character load out there, uh, Mark? Oh, um, I, to, to date, it's definitely Spirit. That wow. that uh, scout loadout we did just, I mean, I it was it was overwhelming the response. We couldn't. I mean, we were getting calls from just every walk, every you know collector type. I mean, it wasn't even Joe collectors. It was just across the board. We had. You know, I, we took a shot of it. We took a shot of spirit on that horse. <laughs> I had to contact four horsemen just to kind of find out where they wanted me to send the links. Because <laughs> the horse was like, you know, started becoming its own thing. It's not even available. It's only like, yeah. it's on, it's oh. on a third party, you know, the black market. And I want, I yeah, mean, everybody yeah. wants that horse because of your, that photography that we saw. Yeah. Oh, you're, you're talking about the horse. You're not talking about the character loadout. Or are you talking, yeah, we're talking you know, about the character loadout? loadout. Both. Yeah, so oh, for, I mean that that spirit, you know, that we did with that loadout with the crossbow and the arrows and all that. Having him sit on top of that horse, man, just had this majestic thing to it. It did, yes. And, uh, you know, and everybody really kind of sunk their teeth into it. And, and for us, man, that was just that's been our favorite loadout to make so far. I mean, there's the Snake Eyes is obviously a, 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 a variation of that. Um, the hit and run, you know, we, you know, we did that grappling hook system, but you know, they're all kind of similar variations of that. So, uh, yes. just, just awesome stuff. Yeah. Let's, let's pull Ryan up on, uh, on solo, lo solo layout here so he can see, uh, his, so Ryan can show us the hit and run. Yeah. You got the, uh, the mountaineer is, is that, the, that's not the mountaineer, is it? That's a different one. It is. Yeah. Our, our hit and run loadout is the mountaineer loadout, the mountaineer number one. Now, I can tell you this. In a couple weeks, you're probably going to see our variation two, our V2 Mountaineer. And, and you can only guess who that's for. I'll just leave it at that. Okay. But it, it's going to be very specific to that character as well. Can I guess or no? You want me to? No, yeah, go ahead, man. Go ahead. Alpine? <laughs> no, I mean, come on. Well, and, it's, and it's, yeah, and it's, it's, it, we've made a lot of uh, cool changes in there. We're going to have, like exactly the right weaponry. It's going to be amazing. It's really going awesome. to be a cool thing. Awesome. So uh, is, is for, for those who are having the FOMO effect, is there going to be another chance to get the howitzer or was that a one and done? No, 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 no. We actually, we have, uh, we have a few plans for it. We've they'll if anybody that's been through the shop, I know Tony, he'll probably chime in on this. Uh, Tony Roma, he, you know, these, he's one of our local guys, right? So he gets to see some of the stuff we're working on behind the scenes. And one of the howitzers we have a variation of, and if anybody noticed the box, there was a blank square check on So we have another variation that's probably going to come out here at some point. We're doing a couple of revisions to the model because once you get the model in everybody's hands and then you hear what's the goods and the bads and we want to try to find a way to keep correcting anything that wasn't good. And so we didn't want to put out the same thing. We want to keep doing, you know, innovate that model, but uh, there'll be a modern twist too, I can say. Okay. No, that's, that sounds, that sounds okay. great. And, and people always do that. They always do tweaks. Like I know when uh, I can't, again, me with my transformer analogies, when bad cube first started their first huffer figure was a great figure, but the paint flakes were all over the place when they released the V2 all that was gone so like that's how you kind of, sometimes you have to go to market first do a little bit of tweaking and both figures were still desirable to this day paint paint flakes or not right i have the v i have the v1 with the paint flakes i still have it i still like it i got it on clearance right so yeah um but that is true that's kind of how the howitzer you know we've we've had so many satisfied customers from that model but it's there's stuff for us that when we hear hey you know this you know, because we have some great customer base that loves to kind of tell us, hey, this is great, and hey, can you do something better on this? And and I we love that, man, because that's the that's really the feedback that makes us better. If everybody just says, hey, your stuff's great, and then they don't buy it again, that doesn't do us any good. We want to hear, if there's something wrong, let us know. We want to we want to do better. We want to create something better for the community, you know? Yeah, you're you're leaving the toy space in a better place than you first than you first came into it with, which is I think is kind of like the legacy um, of any sort of, of of any sort of aftermarket type of uh, type of upgrade kit or figures or or whatnot. Now, Hans Chow has a question here about the Viper rifles. You know, is Gridiron gonna make a vintage accurate Viper rifle? I guess like the one that came with the original oh, eighty six Viper. 
Yeah, okay, that's a great question. I mean, we, we get this every now and then. I think to this point, everybody kind of knows our style. Um, we, we tend to hang our hat on, uh, I, I would say, you know, you can almost call it like a 70% retro, 30% modern take, or a little, little bit more of a creative take. Um, we hardly ever replicate anything exact. Because we know, man, you, you can go out there and there's been some great designers, some great 3D guys, you know, that are just, you know, working out of their garage producing really cool stuff. Um, we, we don't, first of all, we don't want to ever snuff anybody like that out. They're, they're doing good work too. So it's like, it doesn't, it doesn't do us any good to try to just make the same stuff everybody else is making. Hmm. So Let's a see. lot of times, and then there's, you know, there's several of those guys that are just doing unbelievable stuff. Um, so for us, man, we kind of let them do their thing. Let, you know, hey, have them do the really authentic retro pieces. For us, we'll, we would, like for the Viper, um, great example, like our Viper loadout, our, our command, I think it's our command loadout for the Viper. That, you know, comes with the great gun. It's like a, it's kind of an AR-based weapon, so it has a mag, but it's, we, we do this kind of gray-themed weaponry with the Vipers. I think we just kind of generated that in our head from the original gray weapon. <laughs> you know, but it's kind of come out cool because most of their it gets their squad look to have some some you know consistency. So, mm -hmm. hey Mark, are you guys That's, considering doing like any type of hands or anything like that? Yeah. So along with the heads, I know we got to cut chopped up with all that. The heads and hands are definitely in the works. So that they're, they're, and we have we have. A, bunch of different thoughts with the hands we're trying to we're working out a system in which we, we would love to because for hands to us and, and you know i'm i'm you know my main you know thing for marketing with gridiron is you know i do all the photography right so yeah. i see it daily when i'm taking shots like I'm, I'm always like man i wish that hand you know was pointing at something or i wish you know even just a fist or a or you know kind of a kind of a flat hand like a stop action would be cool you know um, so there's a bunch of things I would love to see with a hand. I mean, I'd love to just see a hand holding a cigarette. So it, it's all that stuff. <laughs> you know, it's like that kind of thing. Among other things. Cool. Cool. Um, well, I mean, I, I think that takes care of the, uh, the questions from the chat unless someone else pops, pop, pops something in. I mean, we're coming pretty close to the 90 minute mark here, which is kind of what I had, uh, talked to, uh, talk to Mark about. I, I've got a few extra minutes if anybody needs anything, but if Travis, Ryan, if you have any other um, comments or, or questions or anything you want to show. Um, you have the floor for, for a few minutes here, if need be. Ryan, go ahead. I think, you know, I, again, give them a shot. Uh, I know that price is always a consideration, so don't buy something if you can't afford it, if it's outside of your budget. I completely understand that, but I'm telling you, if you do buy Get one pew pew. This is a great weekend to do it. If you buy one, they're going to send you a free gift. You know, it's four days. Um, Friday nights when Mark just puts some new kit loadout out, you know, just be on Instagram. Check out the stuff that they're putting out. It's going to allow you to take your figures to the next level. Um, you know, I, I, yeah, I, I, I'm big into customizing, but man, it's just, so fun to set up your figure mm -hmm. the way you want. So, mm -hmm. well, oh, we try say one thing right there. Um, it, it's it's interesting you said that because I, I know I got kind of cut cut off or cut off with the uh, stream. Uh, I wanted to jump in on that one portion where you guys were discussing the customizing. The the only thing I could tell you there is from from a standpoint like where we are at when we're designing the models i can tell you this and I, I don't know if too many people know this but when we're making these products especially the loadouts you can kind of tell from the pictures i'll do very minimal customizing to the figure i I'll, i may be you know i'll do a little dirt or some a little bit of a a slight change up of a arm or something but i try we, we try to we try to design these products to be just put right into action so if you had the breaker figure and you got the mortar set, pop off his head. For us, you pop off his head, put Duke or Flynn on, throw a helmet on, you got something totally different. And and it feels like short fuse to us. You know, now you can go yes. you know, extreme and you can do some really cool stuff. And I mean, you know, guys like Ryan, I mean there's you know, Tony's doing some awesome stuff and 
Ruben. I mean, just unbelievable work, you know. And I, I think, um, I think there's just a separation in there in our mind. We try to get this product out to people that don't have to customize. But man, if you can customize, or you just start to learn a little bit of it, you're just gonna, it's gonna create that much more enjoyment. And I think the guys that are, you know, we all enjoy looking at cool custom shots, right? I think that's something we can all share. Um, there's just so much cool work being done, and we're, we're just proud to be part of any of that. The fact that somebody throws our pack on somebody and then, you know, does a new sculpt of this or, you know, adds a bunch of different repaints, <clears throat> you know, it's, it's just it's just cool. I We've enjoyed we've enjoyed seeing Tony's shots this week with uh, the hit and run. That's been a cool thing. And, and then, you know, I mean, gosh, man, Ruben is always throwing stuff on there that it just blows my mind. So, you know, it's awesome. And, yeah, I, I love seeing all your guys' stuff. Oh, for sure. Um, yeah, I mean, it, when I saw the mortar uh, load out, the short fuse load out, first thing I thought is, damn, how do I get another breaker figure? You know what I mean? Just like, you know, I remember remember seeing one of Toys R Us up here in Canada not long ago and not having a, a reason to get a second one. I'm like, oh, if only I'd done that and sold off the RAM, I'd be a little further ahead right now. But that's okay. We all uh, not only live and learn, but hindsight's always twenty twenty on these kinds of on these kinds of things. Um, oh yeah, oh, yeah. I, I I just gotta do one shout out, man. Talk yes, about please. custom stuff. Um, definitely, if anybody knows, if anybody knows Arnold, or you know, you, everybody would know him as the Imperial Grunt. Oh, um, yeah. His his photography on custom stuff is just off the charts, right? And he uh, he has done. I he got him and I kind of hooked up early on because he was doing some really cool shit. He got a couple of our things and did some cool shots. And I was like, man, I, I never thought of how an ambassador or how that all works. But I was like, man, if there's anybody I want taking some cool, like on the scene in the dirt kind of shot, it was him. And you know, we've we've partnered up a long time ago, and he's he's done such a great job at this. And he's right now, man, just just taking some shots like that mortar set. He's doing a bunch of shots of that, and it just makes it so exciting for us to watch, you know. Because it, he, if he, are you guys familiar with his stuff, right? Yes. Okay. Yeah, he does his his on his kind of like on location shots. They're just they're just off the charts, man. So it's a lot of fun to watch. But if you, any of your listeners, man, if they want to get some good inspiration. Go to the the Imperial Grunt on Instagram, and it's just it's just you'll be you'll be blown away. Well, for you know that's I you learn something you learn something new every day. I guess is uh, is what I have to add to that. So Imperial Grunts, go for it. Yeah, he's, he's a, a go to GI Joe Classified lead on Facebook. It's Ruben's group. He's part of it. So just go and yeah. check out some great stuff. And uh, just for folks in the states, BBTS does have breakers still in stock. So, Woo-hoo. all right, good to know. Good to know. So you're gonna you're gonna want to probably grab some um, after Monday. <laughs> so just yeah. just a little heads up. Nice. Some more, uh, some more breakers, you mean? Yeah. Yeah. If you if you want some good like you know green shirt kind of stuff, you you might want to pick up some. <laughs> just saying. Too bad breaker comes with that ram because if it's it was separate, right? <laughs> yeah, but then I, I just go to a toy show and sell some extra rams for like l- half price or that's less. That's actually a good. That's actually a good point. Uh, the only thing I want to add is that uh, if you know Hasbro, they love to repaint and they love to repack. So this gives you an opportunity to have what Hasbro envision, which is phenomenal with the Lenny and Mark and Corey, their team, and then also what. Gridiron is envisioned because you're going to have. So the reason I actually didn't get the spirit loadout set yet is because they're probably likely going to come out with a slaughters marauders spirit. And one of those are going to get the loadout and one's going to come. One's going to be a sniper. One's going to be the tracker. So that's, that's how I think with gridiron is like, you got that, you know, like the Duke uh, that Ken showed, you'll have the full classic Duke, but then you can have, kind of a different duke that hasbro has like and then you get different weapons and stuff so yeah it's like you, the way hasbro releases toys and takes forever and you have to buy them overseas and then then so you having gridiron stuff 
allows us to have fun with our toys because otherwise you're waiting six months for three figures. But when you, every week there's a new loadout, you could buy another Duke, buy another Flint, adding to that collection. That's, that's priceless to me. It, it, it brings actually value to your collection. What good is your collection if you have 10 figures and you got to wait a year for three more or six months for three more, but with gridiron, you're constantly having fun with it. And I can't thank Mark enough to bring in that to, you know, adding that to the community. has just been phenomenal. And, and with the gridiron stuff, like I'm, I'm just used, as you were talking through Duke, I was just imagining in my head, the character, the command loadout, but in the tiger force scheme. Exactly. Right. Yep. I'm just yep. envisioning that in my head. What was that Mark? We've had a lot of requests for that already. Mm -hmm. So we've uh, built there at some point when these Tiger Force stuff, when all this stuff really kind of starts settling in, you'll probably see some variations of that from us too. Cool. Awesome. Wow. And, you know, like you were saying there with the different loadouts, like you've got Spirit Marauders, Travis, and Spirit from the regular 84 look. Um, See, like you can you can form kind of your own like mini head cannon where one has one loadout, one has the other loadout. Like it doesn't have to yep. be the exact same loadout because they're likely yeah. gonna drop the same. You know, they're gonna have it's gonna come with the same stuff. It's just gonna be repainted. So you're gonna yep. want to differentiate the two characters. You know what I mean? Yep. So especially you know, forget army building. That's a whole thing. But just even your regular singular characters, you're gonna want to. You know, there's different alternate versions. So you're gonna want the gridiron loadout on one of them. So you don't even have to buy it that Friday. Oh, I don't have money. You might have it in six months when you get a Slaughter's Marauders spirit or a year from now. So, you know, there's always that backlog thing too. keep track of it. Oh, I know. And for those of us collecting multiple toy lines, it's, it's difficult. Like you're not going to believe it. Like a friend of mine messaged me the other day. He goes, Hey, you know, that Canadian boxed generation one transformers defensor you want? I'm like, Oh, please don't say this. He's like, yeah, I got one for you. Uh, if you want it. You know, uh, it's only uh, 600 Canadian and I'm sitting there. I'm like, and that's a good price for that thing. So I'm sitting there like, can you put me on a payment plan? Cause we're friends. Cause I still want to afford all my modern stuff. In addition to my vintage stuff, like toy collecting is a drug. Um, it's a good or a bad one. Depend it's the bane of your existence. Yet the reason for your existence, <laughs> you know what I mean? And that's just what we've got here. But you know, we feel, I feel, I know a lot of us feel this way. We feel really enriched with, you know, the figures we get, the character upgrades we can have. Um, hopefully I'm not repeating myself too much here, but like check out gridironprops.com. And uh, looks like the uh, questions from the chat have subsided. But um, if anybody has any closing remarks, like I know Travis, you talked for a bit, Ryan, uh, if you got anything. Um, otherwise, Mark, I give you the floor to close this out uh, before we say goodbye to the stream. Yeah, I, I see give it to Mark. Guys having me i it's been uh it's been an awesome road this last year and a half and and man i mean we couldn't have done it without you guys i mean it's this we're so grassroots of a company i mean we we don't do you know your traditional advertising i mean this is this is all kind of a word of mouth we get to use some of the social platforms um but even those platforms would be nothing without people actually helping to spread the word and, and uh you know sharing the stuff i mean we just yeah, we can't say that enough. We, we, we absolutely understand we are only here because of what everybody's done for us. So, so when I say, man, we, we take that seriously in how we design and how we produce product. I mean, here, you know, here we are, we're Saturday and Quake's still in there cutting, cutting models. I mean, it's, and it's like this all the time. Colin will be in this afternoon running more products. So it's, we just don't take that normal time off. I mean, it's just a matter of, of hitting up and making as much stuff as we can. And, and and making sure that the stuff that comes out is what we all at least at least most of us want or need. I understand we can't get everybody, but you know, like the mortar set. I mean, that's gonna that's that's a very generic set in a certain in some ways. But to some of us that that you know, short fuse was our first figure that we bought in '82. That becomes a very special nostalgic thing for us. Um, so. It's just uh, it's just one of those things, man. I, I I'm just so appreciative of all of it, and we're always looking for suggestions, man. We always tell everybody, man, send us send us a text or send us a message. Um, we'll try to do our best to if it's something that we think is feasible and it's something that we like, we're gonna put it on the list for sure. And and you know we just appreciate all the stuff. I mean, Ryan's been great for us, man, for so long. He's been such a a great you know 
boost to us. And we, man, we're pre we appreciate you so much, man. It's very fine. Yeah, uh, happy to retweet anything and and and, and reshare anything. And you know, you um, giving um, your time up here and just how can I put it? You know, I mean, we're gonna have to try to get you on again at some point in time. Hopefully, when uh, when when uh, hopefully streaming is cooperating or the connection is cooperating. But the good thing I notice is that you've got Quaid there working. It seems like it's Saturday and you're working. And I'm using air quotes, but it's a passion project, so you're not really working, right? Exactly. So, yeah. This is very. Yeah. This one, we were we were trying to think of a spin on that for our promotion this weekend because to us this is a labor of love. I mean, it, it, it absolutely is. We've there's certain times where, you know, the three of us kind of like get into it because we're, we're real passionate about making the best product. And so we'll debate certain things because I'm the, you know, I'm the resident old guy. So I bring a nostalgic flavor to things where the boys will, you know, really, you know, they're, they're, you know, they're getting up there, you know, you know, they're you know, getting closer to 30 and they're starting to see things different, yes. but it's, it's, they bring a modern touch to this that I wouldn't even recognize. And so I've, I've, I've been able to kind of back down a little bit. They, you know, we've, we've, we've definitely compromised. Let's put it that way. Well, cool. It looks like we got time for one more quick question. And uh, they gone asked in the chat about uh, a parachute pack or a crazy legs type of, uh, type of loadout. Yes. So we, so I can tell you this, I, um, it's interesting because, uh, if some of you guys know, uh, Muchos Gracias, like they, they, he does some really cool break pieces. Um, uh, you know, it has a more kind of retro flavor to it. And Tony's showing that hit and run, I think, uh, or a, a ripcord. Um, we're doing a helmet, one of our variation pilot helmets that you're going to see coming soon, and we'll we'll be offering that. And it's kind of in conjunction with the Muchos Gracias pack that he uses for the for his parachute pack. Ooh. Now, I can tell you this: there's a very retro feel to it. What what we're doing outside of that is we have plans to do a full Halo loadout. So, and I'm talking like modern. Halo loadout. So there's a ton of gear. If anybody knows what that looks like, um, and we're we're actually working with some some really cool guys on the on you know especially on the uh, on Instagram that have that have you know helped to provide some good reference material. People that understand or were in it or know it, and so we're trying to make sure that that set is um, is done right. You know that's our main our main goal. Awesome. And uh, so when that when that happens, man, it's that's going to be a gigantic loadout. It's got all kinds of equipment going on. So we're kind of waiting to make sure we do that perfectly. Awesome. And I know I, I put a lot of focus on the character loadouts here just because it seems to be the one that gets a lot of us excited. Like even if Hasbro right. does release something, like I know in the case of the Televiper, um, yeah. that one is coming with a trouble bubble. But some of us, we may, we may want to have more than one Televiper and we may not want more than one trouble bubble. So what I'll probably end up doing is buying a Hasbro trouble bubble with televiper and i will have i've already got it done i've already got a video loaded up for it for some time next month um a gridiron televiper kit on a cobra infantry body with a swapped out head like it's just there's so much extra imaginative play that comes with this right um if any of you other guys have gotten that set that's 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 a really nice set from us i mean we've, we've been we put a lot into that one and we tried to that was one of the more creative sets for us because we tried to figure out what to do with his weapon. And, uh, and I think it turned out really good. At least for us, we really enjoyed it. Oh yeah. A hundred percent. Yeah. Okay. Well, I mean, we've, we're basically at time here and I thought, you know, maybe I'd let everyone get on with the rest of their day. Um, so I guess what I'll do there is we'll just say thanks to everybody in the chat. Thanks Mark for being on. Thanks Travis for loaning us some of your cell phone minutes and for, showing us the gridiron shirt and uh, tune in at 2 p.m. Pacific, 5 p.m. Eastern for um, the uh, the two-year anniversary show of Toy Kind of Mood. Um, and uh, Dreadnought Ryan, always a pleasure to have you up. And uh, let's uh, have a good day to everybody else and check the descriptions for Thanks, social media Thanks, updates. Thanks for having us. We appreciate it. No problem. Take care. And, Thanks, uh, Mark. Have right. a good one. See you later, bud. See you soon. Take All care. Right. Bye-bye.